to make this program. It looks like a 3D cube, but actually it's just six flat two-dimensional faces that are skewed in a one-point perspective that makes it look 3D. Anyway, it's something that's just for fun, so let's begin. So I thought I would show you first how this is going to look. If you can imagine these flat two-dimensional faces being distorted towards the center of the screen, the origin or the vanishing point, if you will. And it's going to look three-dimensional to our brain, but it's not. But as long as we can continue to calculate this, our brain can't tell the difference. Let's start by simply drawing a square on the screen. This setup has the origin at the center of the screen, which is what we want. And let's create a draw faces function. And here we'll just have one face with distance of 0.2 outwards from the origin. And let's compile and run, and we should see a square. And now that we know that we can draw one face, let's add a cube struct that can hold six different faces. Let's add a variable that tells us the total number of faces, and then an x, y, and z for each of the four points of each individual face. Let's go ahead and initialize the front and the back face of our cube. It's going to be the same dimensions as our first square we drew, but we're going to add a z value. Now that z value is going to be very important. That number is what we're going to use to divide the x and the y value of each individual point. That's all you have to do to get perspective. When you divide a number by 1, you get that same number back. When you divide a number by a larger number, you end up getting a smaller value, almost 0. And so that's how we're going to add depth. The further back the face is, the higher the z value. Now let's add a for loop to a draw faces function so we can cycle through each of the faces. And I'm adding a different color so I can tell the faces apart. I'm also adding two diagonal lines, one from point 0.1 to point 0.3 and one from point 0.2 to point 0.4. And keep in mind that we are not using the z value at this point. This is just two-dimensional x and y values. And now for the depth function. This is the function that actually angles everything towards the origin. Let's create a for loop that cycles through the faces, and let's take each cube's x and y value and divide it by the z value. Now we're going to want to move this cube around using the keyboard keys. So let's create a move function that has both a state and a value in its parameters. The state will tell us whether we're moving the x or the y, and the value is the amount that it's going to move by. Let's add a point in our display function at 0, 0 so we can see our exact origin location. Let's add a keyboard function with the keys A and D to move the cube left and right. So we need to call our move function with a state of 1 for the x-axis and negative 0.1 and 0.1 as the value. Let's call the move function again with Q and Z to move the cube up and down, this time with a state of 2 for the y-axis with a value of negative 0.1 and 0.1 and let's have the key of C actually calculate the depth. That'll actually angle it towards the origin. Now let's compile and run and see how it works. So you can move the cube around and press the letter C to calculate the depth and it does it correctly by scaling the back face towards the origin. But you continue to press C, it'll continue to shrink that number. So let's fix that. What we can do is reset the initial value of the cube, putting it back at the origin but if we had saved our x, y, and z offset, we can then translate it back to where it was and then calculate the depth. Let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the cube points. So in the move function, let's store that x, y, and z translation, and then in the depth function, we'll apply it before each point's calculations. And let's call the initial function right before the depth function, so the cube can reset back to its original size at the origin, then translate back to where it was, and then calculate it for its perspective. And the last thing I would like to do is make it so we don't have to press C to calculate the depth. Let's make it so any of the move buttons will do it for us. And there you have it, a fake three-dimensional cube that is actually just six two-dimensional faces that we are distorting the points based on the Z value. I hope this was fun, stay inspired, keep programming, and see you next time.